I said, I don't really know what to make a video of. And they said, well, well, you show people the difference between a sweet 16 and a standard 16 brownie. I said, well, that's easy. Right there, it says sweet 16. So you know that's a sweet 16. This is easy. Here's a standard 16. It doesn't say anything. That's a standard 16. Now see, that was pretty easy. That's the difference. But there are other differences between a standard and a sweet 16. This is an older model here of a standard. Uh, this gun, oh, no telling when it was made, probably in the early 50s or so. It's a, um, it's a classic standard uh, 16. Uh, here's the barrel for this gun, and this gun has the right barrel with it. A lot of times barrels get swapped around. I know that because on this old standard, it has the uh, serial number on the barrel. And they did this up till 1953. They would stamp the serial number on the barrel. And they also stamped serial numbers on the uh, carrier screws. Right there, if you can see there, that there's numbers on that, those carrier screws. Um, that is the serial number of the gun. And also, if you were to take these trigger plate screws out, you will see that stamped along the inside, along the, the shank of the screw, will be also be the serial number of the gun. Then after a while, somebody probably asked the question, why do we do that? Because all the barrels interchange, uh, the screws, uh, they pretty much interchange. There's really no difference in them. So why in the world would you put, you know, the serial number on the screws? And why would you need the serial number on the barrel? Um, here's where they put it right here on the barrel ring. And so finally someone, and apparently in a focus group meeting or something, said, you know, I really don't know why we're doing that. And they said, yeah, why do we? Let's, let's quit doing that. It's not necessary because these barrels all interchange. This is a sweet 16 barrel here. It'll go on this standard 16 just fine uh, and vice versa. I can put this standard barrel on the sweet 16 I've got laying there. So all the A5 barrels are pretty much the same. There's really not too much difference. Now, in the old standard 16s, when they went to the sweet 16, the idea was to make it lighter. And uh, you see the, the, uh, the barrel on the, uh, the standard 16 here. Uh, there's no holes drilled in the uh, barrel ring. There are holes drilled in the sweet 16 barrel ring. That's to keep uh, down on weight. And this uh, barrel for the sweet 16, even though it has a rib on, is still a little bit lighter than the, uh, the, the standard 16. Now, they also made plain barrels for the sweet 16, of course, but they would always have the, uh, they call them a matte rib barrel. We've talked about this before. They're just a plain barrel, but they have some matting going down the top of the uh, the barrel to break up light, supposedly. Uh, uh, but they're, they're one and the same barrel. These barrels all interchange. So, to look at the standard 16 again, this, uh, this early gun, as you can see, has what we call the uh, early suicide safety, the front safety. Uh, they got away from that. Now, the first few Sweet 16s they made, they, they continued on with this, with this uh, front safety, the suicide safety. They, uh, then after a few years, they went to uh, the uh, crossbolt safety, like you see in this Sweet 16 here, uh, which is much better. Uh, your finger out of that trigger guard is a lot safer. Crossbolt safety is so much safer and, and easier. Uh, in the heat of the battle, if I were shooting at a, a ring neck pheasant or woodcock or whatever in the heat of the battle I, don't, I couldn't remember if I was pushing or pulling so uh, they went to the crossbow safety so here's the here's the big difference between the uh, standard and the sweet 16 it's more it's more so than just what it says on the receiver it's a little more to it than that uh, they cut down on weight now for the wood they uh, would channel out the inside of the wood on the sweet 16s to make them weigh um, way less. Here's a cutaway gun we have. You can see we cut this stock down through the middle here. You see how they've removed some wood here? And the wood adds to the weight a lot uh, on, on these guns. Uh, they, they, they use the, the lighter French walnuts so they don't weigh as much. And uh, on the Sweet 16s they would uh, channel out the stock to cut down on weight. Uh, the forearms were basically the same. They never really changed. Um, so the change was in the, in the stock. Now Here's something else that most people don't realize this and they don't see it. Uh, you'll, you'll know what I'm talking about after today. Uh, if the camera guy can zoom in, it's going to be a little hard to see, maybe. Uh, down inside the receiver here, now I don't know how well it's going to show up. 
there are some milling cuts made inside of the Sweet 16. And the idea in that was to cut down on weight. If you take the trigger plate out, you'll see some cuts made back in the back. So they made some, they took a milling cutter and they, they channeled out the uh, receiver, removing some weight to make it weigh less. Now a lot of guys don't realize that. But if you look at the standard 16, and this is a one piece carrier, by the way, the uh, speed load system was a great improvement too. The early Sweet 16s that had the, still had the suicide safety, many of them had, still had the, uh, the uh, one piece carrier, which meant, you know, to load the gun, you had to kind of be in an awkward position, push the button and push the carrier down. Whereas the speed load, of course, you just pop the, the uh, round right down without having to push on any buttons. It's a wonderful, wonderful improvement. So the, um, uh, get this out of the way, down inside the, the receiver here, you can see it's all just kind of flat in here. Uh, there's no cuts been made. Uh, see the difference? See the, uh, the, the cuts down in here? Uh, that, that, that's uh, another thing they did to, to um, lighten up the, uh, the gun, make the Sweet 16. Okay, light. now, these guns, when they're together, we weighed the two of them. The standard 16, and we weighed this Sweet 16. And even though the Sweet 16 has a bent rib barrel on it, it still weighs a half pound less than the standard 16s. So that's the difference between them. It's all about weight. Uh, you know, if you're like me, I, I hate carrying a heavy gun around with me. That just, that's, that's awful. I want a lightweight gun. So the Sweet 16 was just made up to be, uh, to cut back on weight. And it made them a little, you know, later on, they adopted the, this, the split carrier. And of course they went to the gold plated trigger and the cross bolt and uh, this Sweet 16 here weighs seven pounds. This uh, standard weighs seven pounds, eight ounces. We have weighed them, and I can feel the difference. You pick them up, you'll see right off, there's just a difference. Now, this old standard 16, this is a great old gun. It's all still hand engraved. In fact, the engraving on this one's chiseled very nice and, and nice and deep. Um, actually, I think the engraving on this uh, standard is a little better than the Sweet 16. The, uh, the Sweet 16 is not quite as deep. Now, Engraving, it just depends on who was engraving the gun that day and, and um, you know, the mood he was in or his style of engraving. But this, this old standard here has very nice, nice engraving. And this pattern on this one side is actually a little longer and a little more, uh, it just, it's just, I don't know, I like engraving better on the standard actually, but, you know, each to his own. So, let's see what else I can tell you about the standards and Sweet 16s. Um, now, there are... You know, the predecessor of the standard 16s, of course, we've talked about them before, I believe, were the old short chamber 209 16 gun. And they look basically the same. You can't really tell much difference. Um, you pick up an old uh, early gun. The early guns didn't have engraving on them. Uh, they were all just pretty slick on the sides and all, no, no engraving. Um, you can spot the old uh, short chambered guns by looking for the one-piece carrier and the suicide safety. And the main thing you look for on also uh, the old standard or the old uh, early uh, short chamber guns had a fixed ejector. It doesn't slide like this one. This ejector slides. These, uh, the standard grades were, uh, or the uh, short chamber gun, 209 16s, had a fixed ejector that was that was riveted in place. And to make the alteration, to alter them to a two and three quarter, you have to make a sliding ejector so it slides and it just makes the gun function. But uh, this is the, these, these guns both, of course, are chambered for two and three quarter. So basically that's the difference. Uh, the, uh, the Sweet 16s are much more desirable and they go for a whole lot more money. Standard 16s are kind of a slow sell. They're just, people just generally don't want them. They're heavier. They just don't have the looks of the, uh, the Sweet 16s. Um, they want bent rib barrels. Now, you can still, uh, don't misunderstand me, these, these early um, uh, Standard 16s did come with ribs. Uh, they were a solid rib. And a lot of guys like those, and I do too. But uh, uh, for the most part, guys really prefer the uh, Sweet 16s, uh, lighter weight, vent rib barrels or mat rib barrels. Uh, the stocks have been channeled out. And so the, the uh, Sweet 16s fetch a whole lot more money than a standard 16. 